In this Elden Ring video, I'm going to be showing you my Black Flame Bushido build, which is a Dex Faith build at level 150, and it's sort of a combination between the Blazing Bushido build and the Black Flame Spellblade build. If you've been wondering how to play a Faith Samurai, then watch on to find out. So first up, let's talk about the weapon that we use for this build. In this build, I'm using the Cross Naginata, and the reason I'm using this weapon is two things. First of all, it has bleeding intrinsically on it, which works really well with Blood Flame Blade. And secondly, in order to use Phantom Slash, you need to use a polearm type weapon or a twin blade in order to use that ability. Phantom Slash is extremely deadly. Essentially what it does is it shoots a phantom forward that charges and attacks, then you charge and attack, and then you can follow up with a phantom slash and then do another follow-up yourself. This gives you four hits in the space of a couple seconds, and they hit markedly harder than your regular attacks do. Additionally, what I really love about this ability is that if you're buffed with something like Black Flame Blade, or if you're buffed with Blood Flame Blade, the Phantom will also use that buff on the target that it's attacking, which is great. Phantom Slash is an interesting ability because it takes a little bit to get used to, because what happens is, when you first fire off the ability, you are going to charge the direction your character is facing, while the Phantom will go directly towards the target that you are attacking. So you could be facing the complete opposite direction when you cast this, and you'll actually charge that direction, which sort of allows you to use this as an evasion and attack at the same time. And what I really like it is that you are sort of delayed when you attack after the Phantom, meaning that like you can send your Phantom into like a hostile attack to deal damage, knowing that that attack is going to end in a second and you will follow up when it's safe. Another thing that I really love about this ability is that as soon as you start doing the animation for it, if you get hit, the Phantom will still fire off. This is really good in scenarios where, you know, maybe you have a boss that's like really weak and you just need to finish it off and you can hit L2 and you'll get it anyway. Or maybe you know you're about close to bleed something or staggered. Or even in PvP situations where an enemy is like really, really aggressive on you and you're just mashing L2 and you're able to like stagger them and get out of it while you keep attacking. It's really, really good. You could also use the Naga Kiba for this build, but you won't be able to use Phantom Slash and you would be better off using something like Double Slash or Sword Dance if you want to use that instead. For the seal we use for this build, no surprise, is the God Slayer seal. This buffs Black Flame incantations. And that's primarily what we're using for this build, so that works really well. And even if we weren't using those, it has very, very good incantation scaling for this part of the game, or at least where we have our faith set at. It's one of the best, if not the best, seals you can use for a pure faith caster with 60 faith. When it comes to armor, I'm using the White Mask. This gives you plus 10% attack power if you set the bleeding status effect on an enemy, or if you set it on yourself, as long as that enemy is in close range. You don't do it a ton with this build. You are not focused on setting bleeding on enemies specifically. But when it does happen, you get an extra 10% damage, which is good. Beyond that, I'm using the White Reed set because it has like that samurai feel to it and sort of like a cosplay. You can use whatever armor you want here, but you're probably not going to use really heavy armor because we don't really have points in endurance. When it comes to talismans for this build, I have Radagon Source Seal, Shard of Alexander, Godfrey Icon, and Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman. Radagon Source Seal, I feel like, is pretty much a must for this build, and that's because we have the Keen Affinity set on the Naginata. And the reason for that is because if we don't and we put it on something like Flame Art, even though its base damage is higher, we actually won't be able to buff it with Blood Flame or Black Flame Blade. So we have to keep it on Keen, and that makes the damage a little bit lower. And so that means we have to invest very heavily into Dexterity in order to keep our damage, you know, respectable. And that doesn't leave us up with a lot of points between Dexterity and Faith to put in these other stats like Vigor and Endurance and, you know, Mind that we really, really need. So having that allows us to free up 20 points we can use for those things. Shard of Alexander increases Phantom Slash's damage by 15%. You're going to use this regularly. It only costs 8 FP to use if you only use it once, and then the follow-up is another 8 FP, which you'll use on boss fights. But regular enemies you can usually kill in one L2. So for 8 FP, you get a kill, and getting that extra 15% damage ensures that you can usually get that kill in one use, which saves a lot of FP. Godfrey Icon is there because Scouring Black Flame, Black Flame, and Black Flame Ritual are all chargeable. And generally speaking, you're going to use them when you charge them more than anything. You don't have a ton of FP with this build. You don't use ranged attacks all that often, but when you do, you want them to go as far as possible. And usually charging them extends that or increases the damage. So you're getting your best bang for your buck when you're charging them, which is why I like it here. And lastly, we have the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman. This reduces the physical damage you take substantially, and because you have Radagon Source Seal, this is going to be increased. This will help offset that somewhat. A lot of times when you're using Phantom Slash, you are going to trade damage. And because the attack still fires off anyway, it's really good to actually trade damage because you'll usually come out on the winning side of that if you can keep spamming it because eventually you'll trigger a blood loss 
or you'll stagger the enemy and then you'll just be able to keep going into your L2. So trading damage is something that happens regularly and that's going to help keep you alive while that's happening. When it comes to spells for this build, we're going to use Golden Vow, Blood Flame Blade, Black Flame Blade, Black Flame, Scouring Black Flame, Black Flame Ritual, and Black Flame's Protection. There's a theme here in case you didn't notice. Uh, Golden Vow increases your overall damage by 15%. This includes your weapon skills, your regular attacks, your spells, so that's great. And it also increases your defense, which we need uh, in order to withstand attacks. Blood Flame Blade is there to put fire damage on your weapon. You'll get a decent amount with it because you have pretty good incantation scaling coming from Faith. And it also increases your bleed buildup a little bit and allows it to continue building up or at least not falling off after you've attacked with a weapon that sets, you know, builds up bleeding status bar, which is the Naginata in this case. And it's really good because when you're using it with Phantom Slash, it's also applying it with each attack. So it's kind of win-win. Black Flame Blade is really strong with this build because you have so much incantation scaling from Faith. It adds, you know, a good amount of fire damage to each of your attacks. And it's really strong against enemies that are, you know, resistant to bleed or immune to bleed. And you'll probably want to use it in those scenarios or when you're co-oping or when bosses have huge health pools and they don't bleed. Black Flame is a great ranged option for this build. And as I mentioned, you can charge it for extra damage. This spell has been buffed as has Scouring Black Flame and Black Flame Ritual with patch 1.04. So these are a lot stronger now than they were before. Scouring Black Flame is sort of your AoE ability in front of you, and it hits, like, pretty, pretty hard. It's not, like, the hardest hitting spell ever, but it has a pretty good radius for fanning, and it can be hard sometimes to hit enemies properly with it because it kind of, you know, likes to go up or go down depending on the slope of the terrain that you're fighting on. But if you learn to use this properly, it can wipe out packs of enemies in one cast, and it's really good to have a ranged option. Also, it sort of, like, rolls in a fire along, so if you cast it on an enemy that's moving towards you a little bit early, generally by the time the fire gets all the way out, it'll hit them and you'll be at a safe distance. Black Flame Ritual might be my favorite spell with this build. Its FP cost was reduced, its recovery time was reduced, I believe, in the patch. And what I really like doing with this is charging it up and casting it and waiting for enemies to walk into it. Bosses are generally pretty aggressive and they'll just walk right into this if you cast it early. And then you can get some phantom slashes on them fairly easily while they're inside that fire being staggered by it or taking damage from it, which works really, really well. Additionally, it's super strong against really big enemies like dragons and the fire giant. Any enemy that you can really get underneath that you know you can hit repeatedly with this fire, it's really, really strong against. And finally, Black Flame's protection is there to give you increased physical protection. As I mentioned, you're going to be trading damage, and this will allow you to use Golden Vow as well together. So you can get your physical resistance up fairly high with this, and that'll allow you to use Phantom Slash without worry. When it comes to stats for this build, I have 50 Vigor, 33 Mind, 15 Endurance, 17 Strength, 55 Dexterity, 9 Intelligence, 60 Faith, and 10 Arcane. The 50 Vigor is there to give you enough health in order to survive attacks while you're attacking with Phantom Slash and casting your spells that are all chargeable. Sometimes you'll get hit like right at the end of those animations and you'll trade damage. You, It's okay to trade damage again with this build. It's not a big deal and you usually come out on top anyway. 33 Mind is there to give you enough FP to use Phantom Slash regularly, to use Golden Vow and Blood Flame Blade regularly. They, or Golden Vow at least is pretty expensive. To be able to use Black Flame Blade regularly and cast any of the other spells you want to use and, you know, not have to have a ton of FP flasks. 15 Endurance is there because we're using Radagon Sword Seal, otherwise this would be 10. You have plenty of equip load. The extra stamina is quite good for this build. In fact, you could use a lot more stamina because you chew it up using Phantom Slash. However, we don't really justify the points because we need to increase our damage as much as possible. 55 Dexterity is there because you have A Scaling with a Cross Naginata. If you're using the Naga Kiba, you'll also have A Scaling if you go Keen. Um, and you need to get as much damage out of this weapon as you can in order to stack damage on top of it with your buffs. Even though your attack rating by default is pretty low with this build, once you're buffed up, it's markedly higher from Golden Vow and from Black Flame Blade or Blood Flame Blade. So... It's a little bit higher than it looks like, uh, you know, by default on the stats. 60 Faith is there to increase the effectiveness of your incantations. This is Black Flame, Scouring Black Flame, Black Flame Ritual, and to increase the damage of Black Flame Blade as well as increase the damage of Blood Flame Blade. So you're getting a lot of benefit out of this. And if you go too much lower, you're not really going to use the spells that much besides the buffs because their damage won't hit hard enough. In fact, you probably use more Faith in this build would be better even. So if you go up higher levels, I would consider increasing Faith up to 80 first before bringing up Dexterity. And lastly, Arcane needs to be at 10 for Blood Flame Blade, otherwise you don't really need it. We're not using a seal that has Arcane Scaling, so increasing Arcane isn't going to increase the blood buildup from Blood Flame Blade, so there isn't really a need for Arcane here, unless you want to use any other incantation that has Arcane as a requirement. For instance, Swarm of Flies would be a natural choice here. You could actually use, like, the Silver Tear Mask and just, you know, use this spell. You would meet the requirements for it. 
It's not a bad addition to this build, so if you want to use that, you can. Some final tips for this build. The talismans that I'm using are not fixed in stone. You can swap these around depending on what you're doing. For instance, the Fire Scorpion Charm boosts fire damage. If you find yourself casting spells a lot, then you may want to swap that one on in order to increase your fire damage. But just remember that your weapon doesn't deal any fire damage unless it's buffed, and only a small percentage of the damage it's going to deal will be fire in that case. So if you're, you know, mainly meleeing with a little bit of spells, it's not going to benefit you as much as if you're mainly casting with a little bit of melee. So don't be afraid to swap around your talismans depending on what you're doing, like the Ritual Sword Talisman boosts all your damage. So if you're playing a little bit more at range or, you're, you know, a more type, like a defensive type player, that's also not a bad talisman to have. And lastly, I like to use the Fire Shrouding tier in my Flask of Physique in order to increase fire damage. This is really mainly going to affect your... Uh, spells, but if you're using Black Flame Blade, it'll give you a substantial boost of damage there as well. Keep in mind that will affect Phantom Slash if you have that buffed with Black Flame while you're using Phantom Slash as well. Beyond that, the other tier I like to use is the one that gives you Stamina Recovery. I don't have the Green Turtle Talisman slotted here. I love Stamina Recovery. It allows you to do things, cast faster, attack faster, use your weapon skills faster. So this is a great way to get a bunch of Stamina Recovery without having to take up an equipment slot. Stay tuned for more Elden Ring builds and let us know what builds you want to see in the comments below.